All right, everyone, welcome to the uh, January 25th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. This open meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirements of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. For this meeting, the redevelopment board is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join in. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So I will now confirm that all members are present and can hear me through a roll call. Ken Lau. Uh, here. David Watson. Here. Eugene Benson. Here. Katie Levine Einstein. Here. And Rachel Zimberry, I am here as well. And from the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development, we have Jennifer Raitt. Here. And Aaron Zwerko. Here. Do we have anyone else joining us from the uh, Department of Planning tonight? No, we do not. Great. Well, with that. I'm sorry, actually, I take that back. I just noticed that Ken Pruitt, our energy manager, is also joining this evening. He also helps with the Clean Energy Future Committee, and many of those uh, committee members are also here. Well, welcome. We're glad he's joining us this evening. Great. With that, we will uh, start. We will open the first agenda item on our uh, agenda this evening, which is the uh, Arlington Redevelopment Board draft uh, amended rules and regulations. Uh, so, Jenny, I'll turn it over to you. I don't. I believe that these are just the changes that we discussed um, two meetings ago, uh, but I wanted to see if there was anything else that you wanted to share regarding the final draft of the rules and regulations. I didn't have anything new to share, Rachel, um, or uh, board members. I haven't received any other comments, but the one that we received from Mr. Loretti, um, which was posted to the agenda and had been shared previously um, at a prior meeting as well. Um, so this, Tonight, if there are any other amendments, we can, of course, incorporate them or take further public comment as needed. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Jenny. So I will just run through a roll call of the board to see if there are any new discussion items before turning this open for uh, public comment, starting with Ken. Oh, you're on mute, Ken. I have none. Great, thank you. David? Uh, I have no further comments. Thank you, Jean. Yeah, I, I have no comments. I just want to confirm that the only changes are in Rule 10. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. I have no comments. I think it's what we discussed last time. Correct. And just to clarify for everyone who is joining us, Jenny has uh, the, the only changes that are being proposed are currently what is up on the screen, which is relative to the timing for the posting of materials um, for the open meetings. Uh, Katie, any items before yeah. we open this up for public comment? I have no questions or comments. Great, thank you. And I do not either. So with that, let me just pull up my participants list. I will open this up uh, for public comments. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter, please use the raise hand function in the participant section of Zoom. And I will call on uh, call on people as they in the order of the that the raise, the hands are raised. Note that you will have three minutes uh, to make any comments. We'll ask that you uh, identify yourselves by your uh, first and last name and your address. So I will give this a minute. And the first person we have is Chris Loretti. Thank you, Madam Chair, Chris Loretti, Adam Street, um, and thank you for having my uh, previous comments posted. I assume from what I hear in the discussion so far this evening that there's been no 
initiative to place in the rules a prohibition on ex parte communications of board members with um, those who come before them. And I think it's important that you include that in the rules. As Attorney Anessi, who often appears before town boards, has indicated, that's really an ethical issue um, that's very fraught. And board members should not be meeting with people who have business before them who are seeking permits outside of the public meeting. Um, that's sort of like if you're going through a divorce proceeding and your soon-to-be ex-spouse is meeting with the judge privately without you being there. That's wrong. It shouldn't happen. And I believe that should be in your rules because um, I understand that has occurred on a number of occasions recently. And I really hope that you can um, change the rules to do that. The other suggestion I would make or, or observation I would make is the board's been very lax about requiring models in their um, in, for submissions for EDR review. And I think you should change that to be the default unless the board um, grants an exception. Um, and I would also add in general, I'm, I'm wondering, um, you know, how interested the board really is in doing EDR because it doesn't seem that the EDR reports to me seem very superficial and perfunctory and the sort of limitations on the time people speak and the way you're running the meetings, it looks more like you're just trying to get through with things as quickly as possible. You know, doing environmental design review special permits is a privilege granted to you by town meeting. And I've heard some town meeting members suggest that maybe that should be taken away and all the special permits should be granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals. If you're really not interested in doing EDR and doing it thoroughly, I hope you'll be clear about that because uh, I'm sure there are people who would be more than happy to put forward a warrant article to change it so that only the ZBA grants the special permits in town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Loretti. Uh, just to respond to two items, um, there uh, already is a section, I believe it's in section 16, Jenny, correct me if I'm wrong, that, uh, that is that addresses the uh, the the legal meetings that the board has in place, and there have been you no know, instances of meetings that have not conformed with this. Um, so I take exception to that statement, and I also personally do not feel that models um, are necessary or should be required for. Um, the majority of what we see before us, but I will leave that up to other members of the board to see if they would like to address that when we have further discussion. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak? Uh, Rachel, can I um, speak up? Uh, Please. I also take exception to uh, Chris's remarks about meeting uh, prior to any of these discussions. Um, all meetings with um, plaintiffs are done in the open and they, and they have come out from the, from the public meeting saying we can further help them with uh, our views, but not prior to any meetings. And it's only subjected to what we are suggesting, but the final outcome is a public meeting with, with a public discussion. There is no approval. There's no, uh, none of this. Um, so, uh, we, we're just trying to provide extra help to get a better project. And I'm kind of, I, I kind of feel like the extra work we do, we get punished for. And I don't think that's right. Uh, maybe if they want to jo come join us for these meetings, they're more than welcome to because there's not, there's nothing to hide. We're just trying to further discuss uh, how to make projects better. And I think every example that we've done, we made the project better. So uh, I don't know uh, what else to say. I see that Mr. Loretti has his hand up again. Are there any other members of the public wishing to speak? Mr. Loretti, do you have a different topic that you would like to speak on? I'm not interested in having a back and forth on any of those two topics. Um, Madam Chair, I, just, I would just like to clarify, I'm not talking about the board meeting as a whole with participants outside of a public meeting. I'm talking about individuals, um, one or more individuals meeting with applicants outside of a public meeting. 
And to Mr. Lau's point, I don't know that any time that members of your board have have met outside of the public meeting, they've been advertised, and that the public has even been offered an opportunity to uh, participate. But I would just refer you to the letter that Mr. Nessi himself wrote to the Board of Selectmen in the context, in this case, of the ZBA uh, and the inappropriateness of people having ex parte communications with boards. It wasn't specific, um, his comments were not specific to the, to the ZBA. And I've sent you um, references to opinions by public officials completely outside of Arlington um, on that topic. And it's best practice not for board members, for board members not to be meeting with uh, applicants for special permits outside of public meetings. And you know, I appreciate that you can improve the projects. That should be done as part of the public meeting process, public hearing process. Thank you. Thank you. The Any meetings that occur uh, have are recapped at any public meeting. So uh, they are actually part of the public meeting process. Thank you. Uh, Colleen Cunningham. Sorry, hi. Yeah, Stuart Boris from 73 Kensington Park. You know, we're, we're very new at this, so we're just learning. But um, I think Chris has a point here. This, all he's asking, he's not accusing the board of, you know, malfeasance. All he's asking is that the business about, for, you know, pro prohibiting external meetings that are not in front of the public be written into the, um, the document you've got here, the rules and regs. That's all he's asking. And it sounds very reasonable to me. Now, regarding um, reporting on those meetings at the meeting itself, that's, that's not the same as having the meeting in front of you know, members of the public who can ask questions at the same time. So I, I just wanna point out that it sounds very reasonable to me and it's just something you would write into the, um, into the, into the uh, rules and regulations here. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, the next speaker will be Don Seltzer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Um, I have to ask the board if they have considered the impact of these proposed rule changes on public participation. This schedule requires that materials for a typical meeting be submitted by Monday the week before, yet the public doesn't even get to see these until Thursday evening. Some members of the public, myself included, like to use a few visuals to aid the remarks, perhaps a chart, a marked up plot plan, or just some photographs. Before COVID and Zoom meetings, I could walk into the town hall annex just before the meeting. I could hand Aaron a thumb drive with some visuals that I wanted to use. Now this new schedule unreasonably requires that I submit them by the Friday morning before. It's very difficult to meet that demand when the agenda and the meeting materials have only been re released on Thursday evening. I cannot see any good reason why a member of the public should not be allowed to submit visuals up until let's say noon of the day of the meeting. This is not an unreasonable burden upon staff. All they have to do is put the file on the host computer for the meeting. I also noticed that the town calendar lists that the Energy Futures Committee is holding a joint meeting with the Redevelopment Board this evening. This is a surprise because it's not listed on the agenda and there are no meeting materials posted. I suppose that under the board rules, they will be denied any visuals if any representatives wish to speak tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members wishing to make comments this evening? Great, any other comments from the board before we move to uh, a motion to approve the changes as submitted? Do I hear a motion? Gene has his hand up, Rachel. Oh, I'm sorry. He's just, he's just waving. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't use sorry that. Sorry about that, Gene. Go ahead, please. All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to respond to a few of the things that were said. One, one has to do with the ex parte communications. Ex parte communications are improper communications. There's no indication that these are improper communications. When the board has a meeting with a project proponent at a public meeting and has questions and concerns, we have sometimes said, why don't you meet with one of the board members or communicate with one of the board members separately and get 
and then come back at the next meeting. So nothing that is done in that communication meets the definition of an ex parte communication because it's not done improperly. It's not done without um, the board's consent and it's not done um, outside the venue of the party because the party to a special EDR permit is the applicant. So um, from sort of a legal point of view, there's nothing wrong and it helps move the process along. Second, I take a lot of exception to the statement that we don't um, take our EDR um, review requirements seriously. Anybody who's watched these board meetings over the last few years sees how seriously we take them, how we question the applicants about many of the criteria and how they have to come back to the board more than one time to meet those criteria. Um, I agree with Rachel on the models. You know, we've left it to the staff to determine on an individual basis whether a model is required, and that seems to have worked well. On, on to the timing piece. I wish we had more time, you know, because we don't get that much time before we see things anyhow, but we are dealing with schedules that are very compressed for a lot of reasons. And I think everybody is trying to do the best that they can. Um, what, you know, I guess the only thing I would say is that if there's a reason why the visuals couldn't be delivered by, you know, 12 p.m., at least 48 hours prior, I'd like the staff to take that into consideration about perhaps being able to accept them later if there's a reason. But other than that, I think the, the rest of this, the changes are consistent with how the process has worked for a while. And that's why I think the board up to this point at least has felt comfortable with it. Thank you, Jean. Uh, anyone else with comments before we move for a motion to approve? Okay, uh, do we have a motion to approve the amended, the amended board rules and regulations uh, as submitted with this agenda? So motioned. Is there a second? Second. Take a roll call vote. Oh, can I have a little discussion now that we have a motion in a second? Please, Jean. I, I like, um, something at the end of the sentence that starts with if visual circumstances, visual information at the very end that says after the section 20, be a comma and say, unless there are extenuating circumstances or unless the staff determines there are extenuating circumstances. I, I have that. a question about that, Jean. So if it, it sounds like the, the major concern uh, that Mr. Seltzer expressed was if the materials aren't available till Thursday and visual materials based on that have to be in by the next day, isn't the extenuating circumstance always going to be there's not enough time to review? And create no. materials? No, that's not a, an extenuating circumstance would be something like there was a storm and someone couldn't go out to the site or, you know, there was a brownout or the internet went out or something along those lines. Something beyond the timing would be the extenuating circumstance. Gene, I'll just I mean, I think that... I read... Sorry, go ahead, David. Oh, no, you, you go ahead, Rachel. Just going to say that I would think that any type of extenuating circumstance, such as what you just suggested, would apply to any anything here. I don't know that we necessarily need to explicitly call that out in um, in this particular document. Um, I I think that the staff and has always been very understanding um, of of 
of uh, trying to be accommodating to, to timing. And, you know, again, what, what you just suggested is what would con constitute an extenuating circumstance really could, could be applied to any of this, any of this timing. I, I'll just say, I, I think we've recognized uh, with the changes that uh, that the the previous uh, process was not working particularly well, and that there continue to be challenges uh, with both us and the public um, having enough time to review things. So I, I think uh, it's clear since we're making these changes to try to improve things uh, that we will keep an eye on how the process works and if necessary, tweak it again uh, to continue improving. it. Any other comments um, from Katie or Ken on Jean's proposed amendment? I would just leave it as, my opinion is I will leave it as is. Um, and uh, Jean's comments are correct. I think we, uh, that, that would be granted anyways. If it was a brownout or uh, I don't know, something happened, snowstorm or something like that, we say, yeah, sure. You know, we're, we're, we, we would be lenient enough to say, yes, we will take it in on Monday, on Monday morning or something like that. I don't see Jennifer saying, nope, it wasn't here. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, we, have, we have not done that in the past. We, I, think, I think we've been very accommodating. I, I guess, so, you know, I'm sorry, Ken. Didn't mean to cut you off. It's all okay. I, I mean, the other way to look at it is whatever visuals would be presented could be incorporated into the written comments. So, you know, we would still get them as part of the written comments. So if somebody, I'm speaking against my motion, you see. So if somebody um, couldn't meet the deadline by noon the next day, they could certainly include that in the written comments and we would get them all the day of anyhow. So it would be just as effective. So I'm- Agreed, you know, Gene. You know, so I, you know, I, if nobody else is gonna support me, I'd still support the overall intention, which I think is fine. Thank you, Katie. Did you have any comments on this discussion? No, I, sh I share, I think, um, your perspective, Rachel and Kins, that it's fine as it is. Great. Um, so, uh, Jean, would you like to with withdraw that suggestion? Or yes, I will. I will. I will withdraw it since there doesn't seem to be any support for it. Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, any other comment, commentary or discussion before we move to a, a vote on the motion that has been uh, made and seconded? Okay, uh, seeing none, we will take a roll call vote starting with uh, Ken. Yes. David? Yes. Jean? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I am yes as well. The uh, new uh, amended rules and regulations are adopted as submitted. Okay, that closes our first agenda item, and we will now open our second agenda item, which is uh, the zoning bylaw amendments to be submitted by the Redevelopment Board for 2021 annual town meeting. And I will turn this over to Jenny uh, to start the discussion. Thank you, Rachel. Um, and I'm gonna see if Aaron can jump in here too. Um, are you there? Yeah. There you are. <laughs> this is Aaron's memo to me actually. So I am going to uh, just give a quick overview that uh, to explain that Aaron and I, uh, you know, following the last meeting uh, where we had talked about the different types of amendments, I provided a memo. Um, we heard a little bit more about some of the proposed amendments from uh, petitioners potentially. Um, Aaron and I then uh, started the drafting process and spoke with Doug Heim, uh, who reviewed this document with us last week. And uh, I think probably the, the best thing to do is for Aaron to walk through the document. And it primarily reflects what you had previously looked at, except for one of the items, which is the MBTA communities item. 
which of course we can spend some time talking about as well. But if it's okay with you, Rachel, I'd like to let Aaron uh, walk us through the document and Aaron, I'll scroll for you. Sure. Um, can, so, we, can we do Jean. these one at a time? So after oh. each article, we can discuss each one. However you want to do it, just um, Aaron, just tell me where you want, want me to move and Rachel, if it's okay, I I'm going to have that, Aaron. Yep, I think that sounds great. I, I if, if we could go um, one at a time and we'll just see, uh, I'll, I'll take any questions from the board as we migrate through them. Great. So the first item here um, is from the 2020 annual town meeting that was deferred. Um, it extends a reference to a two year period to three year period, which is consistent with chapter 40A. This dates, this consistency requirement dates back to a permit extension act from the great recession when um, special permits were uh, allowed to, well, uh, where the ex expiration of special permits was extended from two years to three years. Any questions from the board? Okay, let's move on to the next one, thank you. So the second item is also a carryover from the 2020 annual town meeting. It defines apartment conversion, which is a use listed in our table of uses, but does not have a definition. Any questions from the board? All right, moving on. So the third item is also a carryover from the annual town meeting of 2020. Um, this uh, defines how landscaped and usable open space, a landscaped and open space and usable open space is calculated to relative to the gross floor area. Um, there was a reference um, that uh, seems to um, might have been it was in a definition, I believe, pre-recodification. So this just brings this back um, up to the forefront so that it's clear how usable and landscaped open space is defined, uh, calculated. Any questions from the board? Okay. But just, just to be clear, it doesn't change the calculation. It just makes it clear again how it's calculated. There are no changes to the calculations or the percentages that are shown in the tables or in the text. Great, thank you, Erin. So the fourth item is again, a carryover from the 2020 annual town meeting. Um, this just makes it abundantly clear that any use in any of the tables of uses that does not have a Y or an SP, meaning a special permit, um, is a prohibited use. Any questions from the board? Okay. The fifth item is a carryover from the 2020 annual town meeting. This carries over the legend that you see before the table of uses for residential districts and the table of uses for um, uh, business districts. It carries it over to the other districts, which includes the open space district, the MUD, the PUD, the industrial and the transportation district. Any questions from the board? Okay. Um, the sixth item is partially a carryover from the annual town meeting of last year and then partially new. Numbers one, two, and three are um, carryovers from last year. Uh, apparently the uh, numbering did not <laughs> work properly. So the first item, the third item, and the and the fourth item are carryovers. The second item, which uh, reads removing gendered terms in subparagraph A of section 323 rules and regulations and subparagraph D of section 627 nonconforming signs is a new item and it removes references to chairman and replaces it with chair. Um, and there's references to he um, and it replaces it with a non-gendered term. I will note that you're probably, uh, you probably recall that there was a reference to the state regulations for medical marijuana that was listed in this version of this article for the 2020 annual town meeting that is incorporated into the next item down. Any questions from the board? Jean. Yes, there's one other administrative amendment. I sent an email to Jenny about this so she knows about it that I suggest be added a correction. The current section 3.3.4a 
says dimensional standards more restrictive than those set forth in section seven of this bylaw, the reference should be to section five rather than section seven. So I think that was just sort of some sort of typo or it was carried over incorrectly from the previous um, zoning bylaw before the recodification. So I think that should be added as another administrative correction. I'll say that again, 3.3.4a, the reference should be section five rather than section seven. Should be, yes, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Jean. Any other comments? Any objections to uh, Jean's eagle-eyed correction <laughs> or addition? Okay, moving on. So the next item that is highlighted on the screen is new this year. Um, the state has promulgated regulations for um, delivery options for marijuana retailers. So uh, this amendment would uh, create um, a new use category, which is marijuana delivery only retailers, which is essentially um, uh, like a third party um, delivery. However, uh, this type of use um, can establish a space, a warehouse space as required by the state regulations to store products that they purchase from other establishments and then deliver those products to customers who um, place an order online or over the phone, but not in person these establishments are not open to the public. Um, and then the second part of this amendment um, is to make um, other amendments for consistency, um, including such as that reference um, to the correct medical marijuana regulations that the state recently um, uh, repro, um, that word is difficult for me, um, that, they recodified the regulations for medical marijuana uses. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I do. So are we adding a zoning district or this is added on to the existing zoning district? There's, um, this would not add any um, new zoning districts. Um, it, the marijuana delivery only retailers would um, follow the same um, allowances um, for uh, uh, for the zoning districts as um, product um, manufacturers. So that is uh, primarily in the uh, B3, B5 and industrial districts, if I remember correctly. Okay, so it's not narrowing it down or making it bigger, it's just what it was before. That's correct. Just, and just, al allowing this new type of use. Okay. Dean, you had a comment? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. So the next to the last line, use regulations for MU, MU means what? It's the mixed use district. Um, the MU district, the only instance of it is at Arlington 360 and the associated assisted living facility at that property. Okay, and why do we need to make a change to the open space districts for this? There's no change to the open space district. Um, as I had mentioned to Kin, this use would be allowed in the industrial district and the MU, PUD, industrial transportation, open space districts are all on the same table. Okay, so it's just changing the table that has them on. It's, uh, and only specifically in the industrial district. Okay. None of those other districts are under consideration. Great, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Aaron? Okay, moving on. So the next item um, related to the industrial uses. So this um, is the warrant article for the, um, the project that the Zoning Bylaw Working Group um, undertook over the past year or so. Um, this is the warrant article proposed to uh, uh, include those amendments that the board has seen um, previously. Uh, our consultants from RKG and Harriman were at the uh, December 21st meeting. 
Any questions? Okay, moving on. So the um, next item is a readoption of the zoning map. Um, the zoning map uh, was last adopted officially um, in, I believe, the 90s. Um, so this uh, amendment would enable the, the town uh, would enable town meeting to readopt the official zoning map. Of course, there have been changes to the zoning map since it was officially adopted, but it's good practice to readopt the official zoning map, um, which is what this, this article would do. Any questions from the board? Jean. We, I think last town meeting, we did recommend, and I think town meeting adopted a change to um, a parcel next to the DPW yard. So That's correct. this is this would be both to amend and readopt, or I mean, is readopt accurate when we're making a change in the map? So there's no change proposed with this article. It readopts the official zoning map that would incorporate all the changes since the last time the town adopted an official zoning map. Okay, so it includes all the changes. Okay. Yep. But there is no specific zoning change proposed this year. Okay. So okay. I'm with, oh, sorry, sorry, Rachel. No, please go ahead. Um, so I'm gonna hold on the next item because I think that will garner a lot of interest and just quickly mention the last two items. Uh, Mr. Loretti has requested that his citizen petition from uh, last annual town meeting be resubmitted. Um, so that's this one, um, the definition of mixed use. And then the last item here um, is uh, the su recommended or suggested article for uh, Mr. Mianen's, uh proposal related to energy efficient um, homes and foundations on non-conforming lots. Um, so that suggested text was provided to Mr. Miantanen and um, I believe the ARB um, had not made a decision in January 4th whether they would uh, submit this or encourage Mr. Mantanen to submit it. Um, so that's what this article is. Great, thank you, Erin. Sure. Uh, are there any questions? I, I know that, uh, Ken, you had some questions when this came in front of us uh, previously with regards to the, the last item uh, for energy efficient homes on non-conforming lots? I think I'm, uh, after meeting with them and going over all the issues um, that Aaron um, coordinated, I think we're all set, I'm all set. David, Jean, did you have any questions on, on this item? No, I'm fine with it. Okay. Uh, I'm it, also okay with it. Okay, Katie? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, and I was in support of it when we met previously, um, so I don't have any, any other questions. Uh, so should we go back <laughs> to the one that we skipped over? Yep. Um, so this, uh, and I'll ask Jenny to, I'll introduce and I'll ask Jenny to provide additional detail. Um, the economic development bill that was recently signed into law by the governor um, included a requirement for communities that are known as MBTA communities, of which Arlington is one, to ensure um, and to continue eligibility for certain grant programs, um, chief among them the MassWorks program. Um, MBTA communities must provide for um, uh, a, dis, uh, a zoning district of reasonable size with a minimum gross density of 15 units per acre to allow uh, multifamily housing as of right. Um, so our, uh, what Jenny and I have discussed um, is uh, the text that you see on the screen and then specifically the, um, the half mile buffer um, from Alewife Station which is um, the second requirement is that that district needs to be within a half mile of a, of, um, 
a transit location and there's a list of them, but Alewife is the one that uh, is impacts Arlington, um, which uh, Jenny and I are recommending that the districts um, that allow multifamily housing as of right to be in compliance with this requirement is the B2A and the B4 districts. I will also note that the other districts that fall within that half mile radius are the PUD district, the R2 district, and I believe the B1 district. Um, so I'll ask Jenny to see if she has anything to add, but the, the, the question is in front of the board, um, which district should we be including in this article? Do you guys have a map? So, so, oh, do you want me to, um, I, I just wanna add a little bit, Ken, if you don't mind. Sure, please. I, I just wanted to add, uh, first of all, thank you, Aaron. That was an excellent overview of, of each one of the amendments and, and for pausing on this one. I also appreciate that because there's, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions. Um, the one thing I wanna just note is <clears throat> we have to adopt a district that's of a, a reasonable size. Um, and so that was one of the other uh, things of note here is that B2A, there's basically two parcels that fit within this half mile radius around Alewife. There's about two parcels in East Arlington that relate to B2A. Of course, B, the, it would apply to the entire B2A district. It's important to understand that we're not, it's not just those two parcels. Um, and then the B4, I think is, we figured out it's five lots, but they're contiguous as one, one big block. Um, and that's the B4. Uh, we're, we're suggesting that both of them because that determines a, a reasonable size, but it could also be one or the other because collectively that does end up becoming a reasonably sized district. But is it a reasonable size in relationship to the transit amenity? That's, that's an important issue for the board to address in this particular um, amendment. Um, the other thing is Aaron and I had done some work sort of playing out the 15 units per acre with these parcels and also believe that based upon this, this would be our recommendation. Um, as Aaron noted, uh, the other options are uh, the PUD, which is essentially limited to the parcel that is owned by the Mugar family, where there is currently a 40B proposal um, under review, um, as many people know. And the, uh, the other district, and the P that uh, zoning district, I believe there's one other uh, district of that type, PUD, or is that? No, that's the that only instance. Only, so that's our only, that is the only, the only parcel of land in Arlington that is zoned PUD is that parcel of land, okay. So then the, the other option was the R2, and I think that, um, that that would open this up to all of the R2 district throughout the entire community, which is, a, uh, you know, again, we're, we're trying to, to, to balance the need to meet the requirement in the, in the best location potentially, and then um, and, to, and to also think about, have some thoughtfulness about how it applies across the town. So that was some of the background informing this conversation. The last thing I just wanna add is why, why do we need to do this now? It becomes in effect 90 days after the bill was signed. So technically that's a couple of months from now, two and a half maybe, um, roughly. And there will be, as Aaron noted, there will be regulations promulgated by the MBTA and DHCD and others that won't change the requirement to actually adopt this um, and for us to be able to access MassWorks funds. So then just to let you know, we are planning to apply for a MassWorks grant um, for a, a traffic and uh, transportation related improvements um, in the area of Mass Ave and Appleton, which is a known intersection that's in need of a number of traffic and safety improvements. Um, so that, that is the impetus for wanting to move this forward at this time. And that grant period is basically in the summer. So the timing of town meeting and the timing of this conversation is, that's, that's kind of the, um, the order of events at this point in time. So I'm glad to answer any other questions, uh, but. I think I'll leave it there for now. So, Ken. Um, is the Elwith is the only hub uh, that's that's eligible or can we do a, a bus station hub? We we don't, the, what we have are bus stops. 
and they're not, it's not the type of station that we believe they are talking about um, that meets the requirements. So you might be thinking of the busway in Arlington Heights, for example, but that is essentially a layover. Um, it's not a, a, tr a transit hub. So Alewife certainly does meet the requirements, however. No, I, I, I do. I just, I, I'm feeling like right now, I, I'll ask the rest of the board too, but um, I feel like we're very, um, not giving very much time to study implications of this. Um, you know, it, it's something we haven't been talking about for quite at all. And I think, I think I, I, like, I like to spend a little more time talking about it and studying it and seeing actually on a zoning map. Me too. Um, <laughs> Me too. We, we would as well. So, I mean, the, the, the goal here is if we could file the warrant article, we will have it as the sort of the placeholder. And of course, we would be doing a lot more work um, and research and preparation in order to move this forward. But we, we do, I think, um, behooves the town to file something in the warrant so that we can at least move forward with this. And did you have anything else before I move to Jean? Um, no, that's good enough. And I, I might come back in, but not, I think that's good enough. And yes. Jean? Yeah, I, I thank you. I appreciate, you know, sort of the, the need to get something done on this and, and move it along. And um, we have to start here because this is where we are right now. I have some questions and a number of concerns about it. I'll start with one concern that I had shared with um, Jenny and Rachel by email. Right now, under our current zoning bylaw, the inclusionary zoning requirement for adding affordable units for six or more unit um, project only kicks in when there's a special permit required. If we do this and allow multifamily housing to be permitted as of right, and don't amend our bylaw to require inclusionary zoning outside the special permit context, I'm afraid that some projects can get built that are six or more units and won't have any affordable housing. So if we're gonna do this, and I have some other concerns about this, but let me just say, if we're gonna do this, I think there needs to be something that's referenced in this language that adjusts the um, affordable housing section so that we can make the, um, the requirement, the inclusionary zoning requirement there outside special permits. So that's the first concern I have. Second is, and, and this I think is sort of a policy issue. Our definition in the bylaw of multifamily dwelling is four or more dwelling units. You know, four unit building, five, six, whatever. The definition in the state law, which is the one we're trying to implement, is three or more. So we could meet this requirement not by allowing multifamily housing as our bylaw defines it, but by allowing triple deckers, basically three family dwellings. Um, the advantage of that is we don't have to be concerned about um, the special permit and the inclusionary zoning because there's no inclusionary zoning required when it's um, three, three family rather than larger. That's one piece. Um, so I think that's something for the board to discuss whether we want to open this up to um, our definition of multifamily, which is four or more, or the state one, which is the requirement we have to meet at a minimum, which is three units. Second is, and this is another thing, I think the requirement is just to authorize this within the half mile of L-Wife. I don't think the requirement is 
to extend it throughout the entire town. And if the rationale for um, doing this was to, you know, make it within walking distance of, in our case, the LYT stop, it doesn't meet the rationale by extending it throughout the entire town. And my concern is that there, I don't think that requiring a special permit has been a barrier for people in building multifamily housing in town or mixed use, which is what most of them turn out to be in town. On the other hand, the advantage of special permits for us, and I credit the architects on the board, the current and the former ones, is that the projects end up being much better projects because of the special permit process than they were when they were first provided to us. So when we make this change, if we spread it out through the entire town, we theoretically at least lose, lose some level of control that I think has resulted in better projects for the town. Um, the last thing is, and, and I don't know whether this is a good or bad idea, but I just mention it as a possibility, and that's just put an overlay district within a, a half mile of the L life stop um, in which three family homes are allowed as of right, because three family would meet the requirement. And we might want to exclude a few of the parcels. Of, I, I have the map in front of me. I obviously don't know exactly where the half mile is from our life, but it looks to me like most of it other than the PUD, and we might as well put the PUD in. Um, if it's an overlay district, most of the rest of it are, are two family districts. So it's not a big leap to, um, to do a overlay district for that. So I'm not sure whether that's a good idea or not. I just put that out as worthy of discussion, as well as do we want this proposal for the B2A and B4 to be throughout the town or only within a half mile of Alewife? And do we want it, our definition in the bylaw, which is four or more units, or the definition in, um, in the state law, which is just three units? Um, Rachel. Yes, Jen. Can I please respond, please? Um, so I think first thing is probably, and Aaron, are you still there? Sorry. <laughs> Yes, I'm just on mute. Oh, sorry. Um, I had my screen small, so I lost you. Um, so I think Aaron and I went through quite a lot of brain racking around how we meet this. And it, it is not as simple as just allowing three families. And um, Aaron, would you, can we talk about how we came to this? And it has to be that the minimum density is still 15 units per acre. So we want to do, do you mind talking about that? If not, I'm going to pause for a second and then just while you're looking that up, uh, we, we, we would have to amend other sections of the bylaw as well. I, it's just that, but from a timing perspective, it didn't get posted with this document. Um, we would definitely have to amend probably the definitions, actually 3.4 for EDR as well as um, 8.2 for um, affordable housing because of the phrasing in um, 3.4 and 8.2, I think we would have to make it clear in 3.4, for example, that it wouldn't apply. Um, so that would be a use that would not apply in your list of uses. And then in 8.2, you would have to provide a subsection that makes it clear that we would want that to apply, which I believe can be the case that you can allow affordable housing at any development. So Jean and I um, did have correspondence about this matter. And having worked on this particular topic in many communities throughout Metro Boston, it is an allowable requirement that we could say we want to include affordability and we want our section 8.2 to be relevant. Um, in terms of this, Erin, uh, do you feel ready? I, I can't, um, if I switch my screen, I have to go back to the bill language and I can read it verbatim. Would that be easier? Um, no, I mean, it's a simple explanation is okay. the fact that three families require a minimum lot area per unit of 2,500 square feet. 
in all of the B districts and therefore, um, but then also a minimum lot area of 5,000 square feet. So if you divide the, an acre by 2,500 square feet, it does seem like the um, use that allowing three families would be eligible. However, when you consider the fact that there's a minimum lot area in addition to that, and um, for a three family, if you need two 2,500 square feet per lot, or excuse me, per unit, you actually need um, 7,500 square feet as a minimum lot area. So when you'd calculate the math out, it doesn't actually meet that minimum gross density of 15 units per acre. And that, that was actually, so there was like the or also, you, you could also allow the, the two, three families on one lot, which we also do not allow or something right. like that. Right, so the, the or statement is um, at least two buildings with two units in each building, but our zoning prohibits, um, you know, more than one principal structure on the lot. And a two family dwelling unit is one principal building, even though there's two units. Correct. Two dwelling units. Um, so Jean, I don't, I, um, I very much appreciate your measured approach towards this. We, we, we did talk about that initially and, and worked our way back to, to this. In terms of the applicability throughout that particular district, that is something for the board to discuss. I will just again emphasize the point that it does need to be a, a district of reasonable size. So that's just something to think about. Can, can I just ask a question related to what you just said, which I really appreciate because obviously you guys have you two have done a lot of work on this and thinking it through. If we did an overlay district, right, we could encapsulate all of yeah. the things that you mentioned. I, I forgot not, that one. I'm not saying pro arcana the overlay district. I'm just putting it out as one possibility, yeah. which is if we did the half mile overlay district, we could do all of the things you mentioned so that it would meet the requirements because that's what you do with an overlay district, basically. My, my short answer to that is I think the intention is to amend the underlying zoning and that's still an optional way of achieving this goal. It's not, it, it doesn't say anything about it being prohibited in any manner. So it is a possibility. And again, and, and another one that Aaron and I also talked about. Um, and by the way, we've, we, we haven't spent nearly as much time as we would have liked to have talk, talking about this. It's really, um, it's very new and we're trying to figure it out. We've spoken with colleagues at the state to learn more as well as many other planning colleagues working throughout the Commonwealth trying to um, figure out what to do and particularly those communities that have a town meeting where there's a, the importance of trying to get this done um, in, a, in a relatively short period of time. And so, we, um, this is, the, this is our best uh, proposal at this moment in time. But I think, Jean, you make a very good point about the overlay concept. Jean, did you have any other questions or comments before I see if David or Katie? Can I make questions? one quick comment? Uh, or you want me to come back after you? Uh, uh, no, no, go ahead, Ken. Um, so you're just saying, we need to put this some sort of uh, uh, zoning bylaw amendment in for, uh, for for the time being right now while we study this and understand the ramifications of this because I, I, I see what Gene's trying to do and it makes a lot of sense but also I want to take a look at it from a um, from a point of view of, of uh, a developer or a homeowner and say does will that will what we're doing here encourage uh, what we're trying to get here is more, uh, more, more, more housing, and uh, I want to look. I, I just want to understand that whatever regulation you put in here is not going to hamstring it, and that's that's not where I'm. That's where I'm not getting it right now. I, I just don't feel comfortable right now on all these changes because they're happening too quick, and I don't understand how that affects the bottom line. Well, that's all I want to so, say. So, is your question? And I don't want to lead lead you in any particular area. Is there a way to write this broadly enough so that there is the time to study it leading up to filing the main motion? What what what, what do you have a an ask or a? 
I, I yeah, sort of. I mean, I was wondering if if we maybe can uh, um, have a couple of small committee uh, meetings on this, you know, uh, and talk about it uh, with maybe a couple of realtors, a couple of contractors, or whoever get their side input as well as us. And you know, I, I think you guys done a great job of trying to understand this thing, but just get up a broader picture of this whole thing, then see how it works and see what we're doing. Because otherwise I don't see, I, I, I don't see what the round, I see that we're rushing it too quick and we're gonna drop something. Uh, move over to David. So I, a couple of things. First, I, I think the real issue at this moment is that if we don't put a, an article on the warrant for annual town meeting, then we won't be able to consider making any changes at annual town meeting, which would then potentially prohibit us from applying for mass works grants uh, until such time as we make a change in the future to comply with, with the, uh, the new 40A provisions. So we, in order to at least preserve the possibility that we can continue to apply for mass works grants, we need to put something on the warrant and the warrant closes in a few days. Um, so we don't really, unfortunately with the timing of this, we don't have time to study it. So, but with respect to Kin's point, um, can we can we file something that maybe doesn't doesn't uh, reference the specifics of the B2A and the B4 to give us some time to think about exactly what we might want to do? I, I realize you guys have gamed this out and think that's the best option, but we're just seeing it now and I agree with Ken, I'd like to see it on the map and understand uh, the implications. And I also uh, was was going to bring up the idea of an overlay district as, as a possibility to, to more tightly tailor this to the half mile distance from Alewife. Um, so so I, I do think that yes, uh, even though I'm usually the first person to say I don't want to put anything on the warrant when we don't have a clear understanding of the exact changes. Um, I think in this case, there's there's urgency to preserve even the possibility of the town continuing to apply for mass works grants in, in the near future, um, which which is important. Um, it doesn't mean it, we may still decide upon further examination over the next couple of months to not move forward with any. Uh, with any changes for this town meeting, if we don't if we don't agree on it or or don't like the direction it's in, but uh, then we would be making a deliberate choice to forego being able to apply for those grants uh, until we get this sorted out. Um, so I think we should put something on the warrant, although if if we, if we can make this even a little bit broader so that we can really have the full discussion um, before we, we set the, the uh, exact changes, I, I would support that. Um, I did have one question, which is, is there a reason that we wouldn't want to or be able to include the Mugar property? Is your question just the, the PUD to, to just apply this to the PUD, David? Uh, why wouldn't we include that? That kind of seems like a gimme because it's right next to Alewife. Jenny? Um, well, so let me, there's a lot to <laughs> reply to. Um, first thing is, uh, yes, right now this is a placeholder warrant article. The deadline is Friday. It, it feels hurried to me too. I wish I had more time to vet this out a little bit more. I also wish I had prepared like three of these. <laughs> so you were just looking at this one. <laughs> um, and that, um, so there is no reason to leave anything out right now. It all is potentially on the table, including the various ideas that have been shared. So I, I'm just thinking this through and out loud a bit. Um, and Aaron, you can be like, please jump in at any time. 
but I mean, we could prepare different warrant articles that gets at this in the different ways in which some of you have suggested now, um, as well as include other districts. There's no reason to leave something in or out. We were a little bit wary of R2, in intentionally so. Um, however, that could also be included in this. Um, I, I think to not say the district in the warrant article would be a bit of a mistake. Um, it could, although it could be districts that are within a half mile of the T Alewife T station, that might be the other way to phrase it. Um, if that would make, I think we would then be, we would then be of course listing the districts and that includes our two, but that, that could be another way of perhaps just noting it in the warrant and holding the place. Um, and then if this overlay district idea is of particular interest, um, that would be, that would be a different article, I believe. I don't think we could l like lump that into this one necessarily, but Aaron, what, um, I'm just curious what you think about that. It feels like a different one altogether. Like it would be a whole separate section in and of itself. Yeah, I agree. Um, and to allow the creation of an overlay district would be a separate article. Um, but, Similar to our other overlay districts that are in the zoning bylaw. They have correct. their own constitution, essentially. Right. Um, but to make this article more broad based, um, I would agree with Jenny's suggestion to, to strike those specific references to B2A and B4 and, and leave it up to, you know, districts uh, that, are lo that are within a half mile of Alewife. And you, you could include a clause in there to but not including R2 or to include R2, depending on the vote of the board. Gene? Yeah, I think we're getting toward what might be a broad enough wording of the article, um, which I think, you know, as, as other people have pointed out is where we need to be at this point, because there are a lot of things we're not sure about yet. So I think, um, I think if after the word children, it said something like um, in the districts within a half mile of the L life, you know, MBTA station, whatever it's called, um, that might do it. And then say something like, and make related changes to, you know, 3.34 and 8.2 or whatever those exact references are. So you don't lose the need to do that. Um, but I do think that if we, um, I'm just thinking that with this wording, it may also allow us to do an overlay district and you won't need to do a second, um, need to do a second warrant article for that. Well, what we if we just had the, or take any action related there to catch all at the like we do in some of the other ones. Well, we definitely need to do that, but I think we just might want to call out the um, EDR and the affordable housing. But yeah, we may be able not to do. It might be worth having a quick conversation with town council about whether this would allow us the flexibility to make those sort of decisions. I'm just gonna like type, but please yep, I, I please be aware of the fact that for further editing is necessary and I'm aware of that. <laughs> so sure. uh, well, it's like section two, section five, section, oh, section 3.4. Section eight, yeah. Section eight. Eight, eight, eight point something. Eight point two. Eight point two. And then what about um, if we added an overlay district, I was just trying to do my quick uh, not well, but uh, that's in five, right? That would be okay for well, five. Establishment of districts is in four, so I think you've covered it. Just, just put oh in four. You mean? Well, you'd have to change. Oh yeah, five. I think it would need to be added to section four. Mm -hmm. You're right. And five probably too. Yeah, so we've got uh, all the sections, <laughs> <laughs> um, except for six and that, seven. In that Feels case, kind of like you, we should just include them. In that case, would or take any action related there to just cover it if we're basically naming all of the, the sections? 
it doesn't hurt to have them here. I mean, I, I can just put the the overall section number is probably just okay. just as well at this point, and we yeah. can we can go further. Do we think section six though? I am um, somewhat serious about that. Did, it, what, did we identify that as being an issue, or was it only section five? We haven't yet, but the overlay districts are referenced in I meant, um, in section six, I believe. So we would need to include yeah. that, aren't they? Or okay. am I wrong? Uh, if if I I'm might, sorry. Rachel, the, um, the overlay districts are in section five. Um, they're five, seven, and five, eight. Um, section six includes off street parking, which um, unless yeah. unless you want to make this a big article, um, we could tackle that section. But um, and it also includes signs. Um, my my opinion is is that it may not be needed um but uh yeah i just thought that the overlay district the that there were it's the open space sign district that's what it is but you know the overlay district could you know say that whatever the underlying parking and sign requirements are applies, so you don't need to change six for that. Yep. I would put parking in there. I would put parking in there because we're talking about the whole process of putting within half a mile of uh, Elwave and then uh, we could, I mean, I would, yeah. you know, talk about not having any parking in some of these years to, to allow to get to the 15 units or something or other, I don't know. I'm just thinking yeah. out the top of my head right now. I don't know. That's it's going to make a lot of people wonder what Section 7 is for. Sorry. Yeah, if there was ever a situation where we'd want to look at significantly reducing parking requirements, right. it, uh, right. it would be in this situation. Right. Yeah, I would, I would agree that I, I think at this point, since you're talking more comprehensively and particularly for an overlay district, which usually has some, you know, very specific confines to it and again its own sort of charter and constitution and particularly if that comes up as we begin real conversations about this I think not I think keeping it in makes sense um, so this is the, at the moment well if this is okay this captures I think the majority of for now of course <laughs> the the main things that we want to make sure to include in the warrant article and again it is meant to because this is the, the time to do it. Um, the, uh, we will, of course, have more conversations. They will include maps and and further analysis. Jenny, so, just a quick typo on the oh, last yeah. line. It's L Y. You don't need the word the letter T because you put M E T A in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There there might be further editing of this right. one. Please yeah. please note because I I need to uh, note the section titles as we do in the other. Um, proposed amendments. I'd also just add that I think, um, to, to me, this looks good with the understanding that the board would like to be able to explore an overlay district. So if town council believes that we need a second warrant article to be able to do that, and then we couldn't hear that, I think we'd want to see that second article also filed. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I think the uh, the way that Jean has phrased that and how it might fit in here, I think probably is, and I don't see any issue with that. Um, I don't think it needs to be worded any differently. Great. So I do want to make sure, Katie, that if you had any specific comments that um, I know we haven't fully gone around the around the, the horn yet. So did you have anything specific that you wanted to add? No, I think everyone else really covered most of what I wanted to say. I think the one point I just really want to underscore. Um, which it sounds like uh, multiple board members have taken up is just to make sure um, that as we we iterate over this and as our, our town thinks about how to do this properly, that we make sure that we make it easy to build housing, which is the aim of, uh, of the state law. And so making sure that you know, we, we maintain the spirit as we uh, go forward. But I'm really excited about you know, the conversations about thinking about not providing parking, for example, not having the parking minimum supply here to the same way. Um, I think there's a lot of really exciting things we could do with this. So anyway, that's all. Great, thank you, Katie. And, and I, 
Um, I appreciate Jenny and Aaron, your willingness to think about how we can structure the way that this is written so that we can have a good discussion leading up to it, because I do think that that intersection, you know, being able to apply for the MassWorks funds, you know, we've heard from many, many people in the public that that intersection at Appleton and Mass Ave is very, very important to address. And um, so having the ability to apply for the MassWorks funds um, by addressing this, I, I think is very important to the town. So thank you for working with us tonight for this. Uh, before we open this uh, entire section up to public comment, I wanted to see Jenny and um, Aaron, if there are any other comments related to what you've presented that you wanted to mention this evening, or if any of the board members had any comments before we open this up for our broader public comment. Uh, Rachel, what about uh, Chris? Chris's um, uh, request? Uh, we didn't talk about that at all. Well, I think we're just moving that forward. Um, as, as we mentioned, he had filed that uh, previously with the um, with the number of uh, signatures that were required and requested that it be deferred until um, a future town meeting. So I don't think that we need to necessarily discuss support or um, lack of support for that or any comments, but we, we, we could. And I believe Chris is on the, um, on the- Yep, on Rachel. The Rachel, this is verbatim what was filed, and that's what we promised we would do if uh, a petitioner asked us to. We also asked all of the petitioners, so it wasn't selective. It was anybody who had not asked us to resubmit for the special town meeting in November. Um, and uh, Mr. Um, Loretti was the only individual who stepped forward and requested that we resubmit it. And we said we would resubmit it as is, so we'll have much more, much further conversation about it as we begin a, you know, a hearing, a public hearing process or at any other time that, um, you know, the, the board desires prior to that, of course. Um, okay, where, you have, where you have the personnel should be. Yes, thank you. 3.3.4.A. Yeah. 3. 3. Oh, point A. Okay. And what is, I was just looking up the, the name of that. Sorry. It's the EDR. But um, the overall, oh, it's just technically. Special permit conditions. Special permit conditions. Okay. And the ref and it should be, we want it to be section five, <laughs> not section seven. A, a special. Section five, yeah, right. Well, I think the, the way that you've worded the rest of this is that you're correcting the thing that's wrong. So the okay. thing that's wrong is section seven. Okay, that's correct. Sorry, okay. okay. <laughs> um, 3.3, we're good, okay. Yeah. I don't have anything uh, else. Two, two articles down, industrial uses is, industrial is misspelled. Oh yes, thank you. I knew there was another one. There's a U before the D. Oh yeah, in industrial, got it. It was the U was. I think there was also a typo in missile already, unless you caught that already. I caught that. It was okay. definition. Yeah. yeah. We'll we'll do another scan, a final scan before we we uh, move this forward. Any other questions for Jenny and Aaron before we open this up for public comment? Oh. Okay. Great. Uh, so we will now open uh, this agenda item up for public comment. Any of the members of the public wishing to speak, please uh, use the raise hand function in Zoom. I'll ask that you uh, please identify yourself by your first and last name and address, and you will be allotted three minutes uh, of speaking time. So the first person uh, is Colleen Cunningham. Yeah, hi, once again, it's Stuart Borson, 73 Kensington Park. Actually, we raised our hand long ago to point out that typo in the spelling of industrial, but thank you for catching it. Um, but I might as well just take a second to comment on the um, on the MBTA area thing. Um, actually, I liked what uh, Jenny and Aaron had done by uh, saying that, you know, really build in the B2A and the B4 areas. It made a lot of sense. And I'm 
little disappointed that all of a sudden that went away and the board is looking at building in larger areas. And the reason is this, there, there's a master plan that was created for Arlington that um, in fact, I think you guys participated in. And it's a good document and it lays out a lot of very smart, you know, development uh, pathways for Arlington to, to pursue. And, and one of them is the, the master plan is very clear that mass amp development is, should be encouraged and um, the Mass Ave corridor, you know, can stand some improvement. And by putting larger buildings on Mass Ave down there by Alewife near the Cambridge border uh, for housing and replacing some of the crappy buildings that are there now, you'd be fulfilling that particular part of the master plan. Um, whereas just allowing developers to build wherever the heck they want in the R2 area, that's, you know, that's sort of an abrogation of what's called out in the master plan. So my request to the board is consider the master plan when making the decision about where to, um, you know, how to do whatever overlay district that you want to do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker. Rachel, can I just respond Please, to that yep. quickly? I, I want to make it clear that uh, that we want to look at at the best way for the town to comply with the changes to 40A in order to continue to qualify for mass works grants. And if you are listening to our discussion, we are very concerned about how to best constrain uh, the, those changes. So I, I don't, I, I disagree with the characterization that we're talking about just opening up R2 to to any development that people want, because that's not at all what we're discussing here. Thank you, David. Uh, the next speaker will be Don Seltzer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Um, I appreciate what a difficulty it is for the planning department and the board to deal with this state mandate regarding the MBTA districts. Um, it's not an easy problem to solve. Um, for the public who don't have a zoning map in front of them, I just want to help visualize where these B2A uh, districts are. We're talking about all of the large pharmacy parcels in town, uh, starting with an East Arlington, the CVS, um, and Monotomy Grill, that's one of them, uh, the Walgreens Plaza, um, east of Arlington Center, the Walgreens and Trader Joe's up in the Heights, and uh, the Stop and Shop um, parcel for good measure. And uh, we want to consider seriously whether we want to make multifamily housing by right to replace these businesses, what it would mean to the quality of life in town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seltzer. Uh, the next speaker will be Steve Revelak. Thank you, Madam Chair. Steve Revelak, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Um, I'm speaking as someone who is a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, but I'm not speaking for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, my comments are specifically regarding to the MBTA article for compliance with changes to 40A. Um, I like the discussion of having an overlay district that would apply within one half of a mile of uh, LWIFE T station. I think that fits, you know, the, uh, the state changes goal of having transit oriented development. Um, I personally love triple deckers and would not object to seeing more of them in uh, the R2 in the, you know, in that area. And I mean, from a massing perspective, a triple decker is not a whole lot different than some of the two family homes that are there. Now, in writing that article, I'd suggest that one, it would be worth looking at section 8.2, which is the non-conforming uses section of our zoning bylaw. Um, the lot sizes within a half mile of Alewife tend to be rather small. Um, and you know, not conforming to what's currently necessarily conforming to what's currently in our bylaw for minimum not lot size, and not even necessarily conforming to the uh, vested vested rights provision in 40A, which is 5,000 square feet and 50 foot of frontage. 
So there, um, it's one one thing you may need to consider is how to you know possibly facilitate facilitate reconstruction on lots where it would be difficult to do so under the current bylaw via nonconformity. Uh, that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Revelak. Uh, the next speaker will be uh, just says Posse on the screen. Hi, uh, Posse Mietinen, um, 23 Sheridan Park. I'm a member of the Clean Energy Future Committee. On behalf of the committee, I um, wanted to thank for the support for the committee's uh, uh, bylaw proposal, and, and this will help Arlington meet its energy efficiency goals. And uh, thank you again. Just wanted to say thank you for the support. Thank you. Do we have any other members of the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will close public comment. I'll open it up again to the board for any further comments or discussion on any of these articles uh, before we um, move to uh, submit the warrant articles as amended for the meeting discussion this evening. Jean. Just a quick response to what Mr. Redelak said about all of the very small lots. It's another advantage of using an overlay district, but it just also shows the challenge that we have in front of us in crafting the, you know, what the overlay district would be to take into account some of the things that Mr. Redelak mentioned about the small lots. Good point, thank you. I thank you for all of the, the points that were brought up in the public comment period. Um, they're all very much appreciated. And just to note that we, we would be covered under this article to address the issue that was raised if we choose to or think we need to. Um, just I want to flag one thing, though. Uh, at the moment, this last article does not um, this was the one that was to be discussed if it's filed by the board or otherwise. And um, so just whenever you get to that, um, we just need that clarification. Sure, why don't we address that now? Um, Jenny, do you need us to vote individually on these Warren articles or as a, as a slate, as long as we answer all of these, these lingering questions? Um, I just, yeah, just these are the, yeah, just a slate is fine to okay. say, you know, and as amended because it's now a little bit changed from what was Absolutely. prior, uh, previously shown. Great. So why don't we go ahead and um, tackle that question as to whether or not we would like to see this, this last warrant article filed on behalf of the board um, or by the, um, by the, by the petitioner, um, any, any thoughts to start us off in that discussion? Can we ask the petitioner which he would prefer? We can do that. Why don't we have um, Posse? You could unmute. Yes. That's high. Uh, yes, we would prefer if uh, ARB would follow. I would support that then. Uh, any other members uh, wish to discuss their support or preference otherwise for uh, adding this as a Arlington Redevelopment Board sponsored article? I would support it too. David? Uh, I'm supportive. Katie? Yep, I'm supportive. And I'm supportive as well. So uh, I think we can go ahead and make that change to note that that is inserted at the request of the redevelopment board. Thank you, Posse. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Uh, so any other discussion before we move uh, to uh, support the filing of the uh, Warren articles as amended by the discussion this evening. All right, do we hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Great, seeing none, we will take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. 
David? Yes. Dean? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I am yes as well. Thank you, Jenny and Aaron, for all of the work <laughs> that you put in, especially the last minute maneuvering with the, um, the recent uh, 40A change. All right, so that closes the second agenda item uh, this evening. And the next agenda item is a, and look at this, we are right on time. I can't remember the last time this happened. Fantastic. Nice job, everyone. Uh, the next uh, item is a proposed citizen petition zoning warrant article. And I believe James Fleming is here to discuss a uh, proposed article that uh, he's interested in having some feedback on. So James, um, I will, let's see if you could keep uh, your uh, remarks to three to five minutes, uh, that would be fantastic. And then we'll open a discussion. Sure. Um... I have a two slides. Is that is it? Am I able to share? Uh, Jenny, do you? Um, I I don't normally, but if it's okay with you, I can do that. So um, I, I'd actually prefer if we, if you could talk to the items. We typically require okay. that those slides are submitted ahead. Okay. Of time. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Great. Thanks. And if you wanted to um, submit them, we can certainly put them um, in as record uh, in the future. Sure, sounds good. So the um, the the proposed article is uh, to allow the the to see if the town will vote to reduce or remove parking requirements, or sorry, not parking requirements, minimum parking requirements in some or all zoning districts, or any action there to insert all the all the the catch-alls. Um, the goal would be to uh, to improve the experience for business owners by reducing or removing the need for parking variances, especially for small lots for small or pedestrian-oriented businesses, um, storefronts that have been here for well, essentially that predate zoning. Um, having parking policies that uh, that don't penalize uses that are uh, less parking dependent than others. So different uses will have different parking requirements even within a given category. Um, another goal is to reduce rent in new construction by not requiring that uh, any builder builds anything more than what they perceive they actually need. And then the final one is to remove um, a barrier to creating pedestrian oriented places in Arlington. The, um, as to why, why I'm talking about this um, is that the, the table of minimums in the bylaw that's there, it's hard to define good minimums because there, there are only so you can't create categories of use for every possible conceivable business or every conceivable residential use because there's so many different nuances even within a given type of restaurant. Like you could have two restaurants and depending on their business model, one may, one may require a lot more parking than another one. And unless you're willing to write an enormous table in the bylaw to cover all of those cases and make sure that it's fair, it's just, it just becomes a practical impossibility to do so. The other thing is that if you have a minimum in the zoning bylaw, it doesn't adapt well or automatically to changes in society. So if, if transit improves, like Uber didn't exist when the, when the bylaw was written, and that, that certainly helps transit somewhat, um, or increases in cycling or changes in society to like work from home more often, which is, I mean, with the exception of now, obviously. Um, it also makes it hard to build pedestrian oriented corridors like we, we have currently because a lot of them were created before the existence of um, parking minimums and with high lot coverages, it would be impossible to do something like that today. And then on the cost side, parking is expensive to build on the order of uh, $5,000 for a service space, twenty-five dollars to $30,000 for a, a, a space if you add parking structure over or underground. Um, the other thing is that there was an MAPC study and, and studies around the country that show that if you, the more parking that a given business provides, the more it actually gets used. So by having a minimum that requires parking, you're actually creating the market for parking and increasing demand for vehicular traffic. Um, and then the final reason is that um, parking isn't really a good use of land. It's not as taxable as a structure. So if you have more lot coverage, you get more taxable dollars for the town. That's all. Great, thank you. So uh, could you let me know, you know, are, are you looking just for, for feedback on 
that initial proposal from the board? Uh, you know, if you could kind of just let us know what you're what you're hoping sure. to to gain, that would be great. Sure. Well, the the original pie in the sky idea was to just completely delete table six section six one four. Um, and after getting feedback from the town, my realization is that's probably not going to happen. Um, it's going to get too many people fighting it from too many different angles, and I, I I'm perfectly happy with uh, uh, shrinking the scope and going with something that everyone can at least agree on. Um, the one that stuck out to me was the uh, the exception that was crafted for the most recent town meeting that allowed um, parking reductions to almost zero in B three B five. That's really really good. Um, it just doesn't make sense if you can't add parking to a lot to require it. Um, and what I noticed was and I went through and tallied them all. There's a lot. Of, it took a while. There's a lot of um, there are a lot of lots that are similar to B three B five. Think uh, Blue Ribbon Barbecue, Regina's Gifts, um, any number of the small businesses along Broadway or along other parts of Mass Ave. They don't get the benefit of that exception, and it just it doesn't seem fair for one. Um, and the other thing is that because you have minimums in these in these other districts, it doesn't allow for the creation of new pedestrian oriented traffic. Or, or business areas, which is something that based on feedback from residents in the town, it seems like people in the town actually want. So it, in some sense, this is getting in the way of what residents actually care about. Um, and then on the residential side, it's it's that um, the, the most recent example was the Mooger property where the developer has submitted multiple um, memos that say that they, they don't think they'll actually need the parking that the town bylaws requiring. And, and I know that there's a process that they can go through to reduce it. It just seems like it's un, it just seems like it shouldn't have to happen at all. It should just be automatic that if they don't need it, then they should just not have to provide it. Because if they can't if they can't sell a unit because they don't have enough parking, that's their problem. They won't be able to sell it for the price they want. And they also have the banks looking over their shoulder. If they put too little parking in, they aren't going to get financing. Uh, so our, our, I'll just sorry ask the, the more specific question. Are you, are you sorry? Go ahead, Jenny. Oh, I just wanted to say. Um, so uh, Rachel, uh, Mr. Fleming approached me uh, by email uh, to uh, because as part of the warrant article filing process, uh, most petitioners reach out to Doug and myself if if it's a zoning warrant article, and and Mr. Fleming had done just that. Uh, we had an exchange. He also reached out to other members of, you know, other people in the department, um, as well as other departments, I think, as well, um, and other committees. He's done a lot and asked if it would be okay to just simply talk with the board to get a sense of their, um, the, the, the spirit of what he is proposing and, and get some, you know, just very preliminary input was my sense. Um, as, at all, it wasn't anything more than that. Yeah, I think, um, and I, I just want to say, I, I just want to appreciate his interest in having the conversation with the board in advance of deciding to file. We have, um, we will be hearing a lot of other types of zoning warrant articles when they're, when they, if, if and when they are actually filed this Friday. And, uh, you know, it is nice to be able to at least have a, a very preliminary conversation about it, which is what I believe Mr. Fleming is trying to do, but may also benefit from any of your um, opinions about this particular topic and, and to give him a little bit of guidance as he as he finalizes the article that he would like to submit. That was my understanding. Um, is that correct, uh, James? Yeah, more or less. Uh, looking, looking, looking especially for reasons to not do it, any, at least any reason at all that there might be a problem uh, because I don't know everything. I don't do this as a full-time thing. Um, and also uh, knowing what is likely to pass town meeting because I'd rather make a small amount of progress and have nothing happen at all. Great, that's, I, I appreciate it. And thank you for, um, thank you for, for giving the background in terms of what you've looked at, the breadth and, and how you've expanded and narrowed your, your focus um, as you've gone through that exploration. That's very helpful as well. So we'll um, run through and see, I'll, I'll just do a roll call and we'll, we'll see um, what kind of feedback and questions the, the board has for you. So we'll start with uh, Ken. Uh, well, James, I find this very interesting. I think I'm tentatively very supportive of it. Um, just want to make sure it's a little clearer as far as what you're trying to do. Uh, you're just reducing or eliminating parking requirements, that, but not increasing anything else. So let's say uh, someone is uh, a developer has a burden of parking 
open space, the building, setbacks and all that stuff there. You're not changing any of those others, but just the parking. That's right. And that would give the opportunity to encourage more development in the limited spaces we have, or we can have more green space, more open space, uh, or more public spaces. And it would allow us, and it would, it would let the market decide uh, what's required for parking and not parking for for parking not no parking at all. Is, am I? Yep. It basically, let, let it's let them do whatever the heck they want with it. If they decide building shell is the best use, then they can do that. If they decide that green space is the best use, then they can do that. Just leave it up to them, and then and then whatever other constraints the town bylaw applies. Well, it would it would depend on um, the market, not not the developer. I mean. The developer will always go to what. Oh yeah! Is. Oh yeah! As you're absolutely like they'll 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 have an idea of how much they need to spend to build parking, and then if they if it if that's amount is some amount lower than what the town would otherwise have required, then they've got some land back that they can do whatever they please with. Um, I'm generally a supporter of it. I'm just not sure um, the eliminate the elimination of all that, that just seems. Um, very aggressive okay and uh i have no problem you saying that i'm just saying yeah. we should talk about it and maybe we can come up with uh a more equitable number uh you know that would work and yeah uh, absolutely uh, i believe the numbers you have stated earlier you know as far as um i think you said like eight thousand for surface parking 25 for structured parking and uh, i believe it's 50 for underground parking uh, is the cost of parking. And, um, you know, I think some of the numbers you have, you've said and you've done some proper research on this, and I think um, I, I'm appreciative. Uh, I'll let the rest of my board members uh, see what their, what their thoughts are, but I'm generally supportive. I, we don't have anything in front of us to, to look at and comment on, but um, where you're going, I'm okay with. Great, thank you, Ken. Gene? Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Fleming and I had a really nice phone conversation the other day about what he was thinking. And um, I'll just say some of the things that um, I told him is that um, I liked his idea of extending what we did for a couple of the business districts to the rest of the business districts. I thought that was, you know, unless sort of people disabuse me of that notion. It seemed like a good idea to me to do that. Um, I had a problem going to zero parking minimums um, for lots of reasons that I had mentioned to him. Um, we at the board a couple of years ago had put in a proposal to reduce some of the parking minimums and I would still be supportive of that if that's where he ends up on um, the other pieces of it. So I, that's just a really short version of our about half hour conversation. Great, thank you, Gene. David? So I also had some email correspondence with Mr. Fleming uh, prior to this. And uh, I, uh, I definitely want to uh, continue continue uh, looking at this. Uh, I think that uh, the board has been supportive uh, about reducing uh, parking requirements in the past, uh, both in terms of the bylaw change uh, that we made a couple of years ago that Jean mentioned, uh, as well as on, on specific projects where uh, we're generally pretty flexible about grant, either granting requested parking reductions or in some cases uh, proposing that the developer do a parking when we think uh, that it's a good candidate for that uh, when they haven't already proposed it. Um, so I, you know, I, I definitely uh, applaud Mr. Fleming for, for being bold with, with his initial idea um you know i think um uh we we didn't 
get a lot of pushback from town meeting on the relatively modest reduction that we made a couple of years ago. But I, I think that in that case, our original thought had been a larger reduction. And I, I, if I may be mistaken, maybe Gene remembers, but I, I think we actually settled on a, a smaller reduction than we had originally contemplated um, upon further reflection. Um, so there was, uh, in that case, there was definitely an appetite at town meeting to, uh, to agree with, with a modest reduction in the parking requirements. Um, I can't say uh, now, uh, a few years later, uh, that I have a good sense of, of what town meeting would, would do with, uh, with a really bold proposal. Um, one thing, uh, well, a couple of things. Uh, Mr. Fleming mentioned that uh, the town transportation planner had given him some data on car ownership. And I'll just read what he sent to me, which is car ownership in Arlington has held steady at just under 1.5 vehicles per household from 1990 to 2015. And as of 2015, there were about 2,000 car-free households, 7,900 one-car households, 7,400 two-car households, and 1,300 three-plus car households. So what struck this is, is over 50% of households in town have one and a half, have one car or less. Um, so uh, that surprised me. I, I didn't think we were we were at that point yet. Um, so, uh, so I think it is timely to consider um, whether, whether we should uh, be doing something with the minimums. But the other thing that I um, suggested uh, looking into, uh, which isn't part of Mr. Fleming's proposal um, at, at present, uh, but that I wanted to talk to the board about is whether we um, might want to think about flipping things around and going to parking maximums instead of parking minimum. So not removing, removing the, the barrier that is created by parking minimums, but also not leaving an entire list to the market how much parking to build uh, so that we don't, uh, we don't uh, get more parking than we think might be appropriate. Um, and, uh, I, I wanted to get the, the board's perspective on that idea as well. Thank you, David. I'm, I'm gonna hold that for just one second while we see if Katie has any um, comments to add and then we'll come back to the question of parking minimums versus parking maximums. I was gonna say, I, both, I really like this proposal and I really like David's idea of parking maximums. I think that's an exciting direction to go. I don't know if it's for this proposal or sort of a separate conversation for the board. Um, but I think it would be particularly given sort of just general data that we know about parking nationally, um, the data um, that we have here for Arlington. Um, and just in general, I think in the last few years, a big change in the conversations around the politics of parking. Um, I just pulled up some data um, right now that sort of it gives, I'm happy to send it to you, James, if you don't already have it. Um, basically crowdsource data looking at um, what kinds of places across the country have gotten rid of their parking minimums. And this is not something that's confined to big cities or places. That, I mean, it's like, it's happening in so many different kinds of communities, including many communities that we might've thought of as being traditionally car dependent. Like, I think this is increasingly possible um, and something that's become just sort of more widely accepted in a wide variety of places. So I think um, I think there is, you know, again, I, I, no one knows for sure sort of how, how this will be received, but I think it's worth carefully planning and really thinking about um, how to use the incredible data that we have about eliminating parking minimums and potentially moving to something like a parking maximum um, to really show that this is something that is mainstream increasingly in a lot of places, including communities that are a lot like Arlington. So thank you. Great. Thank you for sharing your perspective, Katie. Um, moving right into that topic then, Gina or, or Ken, did you have any thoughts on parking maximums? Uh, James, actually, what do you- Sorry, I just wanted to say, so, so um, I, I actually have seen this the same, I think, Katie, the same map that you're talking about, um, where it's communities all over the country that have done it. And uh, uh, I talked to some planning professors um, 
around the country and seeing what they've got. The reason I didn't include it in this proposal is that I think trying to educate town meeting members, not just on what parking minimum reduction does, but also what the heck a parking maximum is. I think that's probably too much to swallow in a single session of town meeting. Not that it's a bad idea, just I didn't, I, I figured it would already be an uphill battle as it was to try and uh, reduce minimums, um, leaving maximums aside. But that being said, please do talk about it. Uh, Gene or Ken, did you have any thoughts to add on that topic? Yeah, a couple of things. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think parking mat parking maximums are the new sort of you know cutting edge way to deal with parking. I think it's worth discussion. I don't think it's something we want to file a warrant article on this time. I agree with James. It takes, I think, some more looking into and some more sort of public outreach and education. And maybe it's a year from now if we do it at all. Um, you know, I just say my I, a couple of concerns that I have is whether when the pandemic over the T, when pandemic ends, the T is going to restore all of the bus service it's cut from Arlington or not. And to me, that's one of the key telling points on whether it makes sense to move in that direction or not. Um, you know, I've been disappointed that they made these cuts and we'll see if they restore service or not. The second, and this is just sort of anecdotal, but I think it's worth thinking about. A couple of years ago, I had a conversation with someone who lived in the, the Vox on two apartment complex on Route 2. And I was asking her, you know, how she liked it, et cetera, et cetera. And she said, well, it's expensive, but I like it. The only problem is there's nowhere for my visitors to park. And there's nowhere for anybody, you know, who wants to come and stay overnight um, to be able to park. Well, they can go park in Alewife and pay a few bucks. But it reminded me when my parents were alive and they used to come and visit and stay at my house and they needed a place to park their car. And I'm one of those one car households. So we had a second space where they could park their car. But I think those are the types of things that we would need to have to sort of think through and how they would work and the pros and cons. So I think it's worth discussion and seeing if we're going there, but I don't think we're ready to propose it for this town meeting. Ken, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree totally with Gene. Uh, David's idea of maxims is a great idea. I think we just have to take it uh, incrementally like James says and I don't think it should be tied in with this proposal. I, I, I think um, we can develop that way. Let's, let's see how things go, but I think doing incremental steps is the way to go. Um, and uh, I don't want this, to, this maximum to, 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 uh, to hinder what James is trying to do here by reducing some parking. I think that's a good first step just like how we had compromises for our initial uh, reduction in parking. You know, we, it was much broader, Dave is correct. It was much, much broader. And we, we, we said, let's be a little more conservative and get this by, and it went by. But let's, now is the, now is the next step. And I think this is good, this is good. Great, Jenny, I saw you. I, I just wanted to make it very, make it, make sure it was very clear that this is, uh, James is filing a would file a warrant article, not the board. Um, and the, the board, you know, may not agree or may not feel strongly about this being the right timing, but I just want to make that point very clear. He he could, he can file a warrant article by by Friday. Um, and I think he just wants to get a sense of what is what is possible and some of the concerns that are being raised. But I just want to make sure that's clear. And also just to the people who are listening right now, uh, the intention is not for the board to file something. Thank you for the clarification, Jenny. Yeah, I, I would just echo what um, my fellow board members have mentioned. I think that to, to me, an, um, an achievable win would be extending what we uh, started with the B3 and B5 districts um, at this past town, town meeting. That definitely seems achievable given the way that it was received um, and the spirit of what, what it is you're, you're trying to do. And again, whether you decide to look at this as an incremental um, 
piece that builds upon you know con continued education and the steps that we move or whether you you look to to propose something that's more provocative and um, you know perhaps has a um, greater educational burden um, is ultimately up to you but um, it definitely seemed from the reception that we received at, at town meeting with the most recent change in the b3 and b5 to allow another again it, it's it was not we had we made it very clear that it was um, not something that was uh, you know going to zero wasn't as of right it was a a um, a lever that the special permit granting authority could choose to implement when the conditions were were um, appropriate and I think that 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 really went a long way to helping people um, support that measure so I just wanted to pass that piece of information on too. Um, any any other items? And I'm happy to open this up to public comment if you're interested. Sorry, um, on David, I'll, I'll come right back to you too. Um, James, if you're interested in, in receiving comment back from um, from the public, I'm happy to, to open it up as well. Great, David. So uh, I think um, uh, I I would say. Uh, you know, we've we've clearly seen that uh, town meeting has been comfortable with incremental um, uh, changing of, of the parking requirements. And uh, I guess for for James, the, the question is, uh, you know, really, uh, do you want do you want to propose something uh, big? Uh, more of an intention of really sparking a discussion uh, at, at town meeting, or, or do you want to propose something um, that's more carefully tailored that, that you think might actually pass without much um, pushback? And, and that's, that's really what, what you need to decide. I'll take a comment from Jean, and then I think we're gonna move to, to public comment uh, to, to keep the, the meeting moving. Gene. The corresponding um, comment I'd make to what uh, David just said is, does James want to present something that we, the board, would probably recommend to town meeting? Or does he want to present something that we, the board, would determine is, you know, a parking lot too far and uh, recommend no action? Actually, that, that's a good question because I, I didn't realize that you could submit something and then have the board sponsor it until I saw um, Posse's article go right now. So I, is that that's a thing that can happen? Well, what, what usually happens is for the for the citizen articles, they all come to the board and we will either recommend basically to the town meeting they adopted, we might make some minor changes in the wording or we could recommend to town meeting no action, which means we don't agree with this. So right. we do it. So I'm saying, you know, part of your calculation is not only what David had to say, was would you prefer your article when it comes to us be something that we would support to town meeting or not? Gotcha. If so, if it was something that the board voted uh, positive action on, would it then be inserted at the request of the redevelopment board or is it, no? You know? But I, I think to, to your question, um, you know, we have had, so there was the article from, from Posse today, which came through um, actually a, Jenny, was it a com committee or a commission? Um, Clean Energy Future Committee. Uh, um, so yeah. uh, Posse is a member of that. And we've had a number of conversations with their committee members about zoning changes that they're proposing as part of the net zero action plan. And this particular one had been advanced as being the first one as feeling uh, that this should be discussed. And so we started those discussions with Posse, who happened to be the, the presenter on behalf of the Clean Energy Future Committee. So most things that end up, if the board chooses to move forward with them and inserts them into the warrant on their own, are coming through a committee process. It's not typically, gotcha. okay. um, you know, yeah. and, and as uh, tied to some sort of planning process, ideally, because we are charged with uh, implementing our master plan and any other plans that the board is is potentially working on. Okay, that that, right, that, makes, that, that, make, yep, that makes complete sense. Okay, cool, sounds good. Great. Um, so, James, I think I'm going to open this up for um, public public comment. Um, so, I will 
ask that anyone wishing to speak, and I see a couple people with their hands up already, please use the raise hand function. Um, and uh, you will please, uh, if you could please introduce yourself by first and last name and address, you'll be uh, allotted three minutes to speak. The first uh, speaker uh, is, I believe it's Stuart Orson, uh, who's under the name of Colleen Cunningham on my screen. Hi, thank you. Yeah, that's Stuart Orson, Kensington Park. We think this is a fantastic idea. We love the idea. I know that uh, reducing parking you know, requirements is something that's in all of the urbanist sort of publications nowadays, and it's great. So I just want to say as a member of public that we, we really like this and we suggest that you run with it. Um, probably can't go to zero immediately, but at least run with the Again, trying to you know require a few uh, less parking. Uh, regarding Mr. Fleming, it sounds like he may not already know this, but he should make friends with the folks running Walking in Arlington, an advocacy group uh, for pedestrians in Arlington, run by somebody named Rachel Stark. So, Mr. Fleming, I, I urge you to uh, Google that particular group and uh, make friends with them. Um, uh, item number two, I'm a little little less probably, I want to say it in a friendly way, I know this meeting is supposed to end at 9.10 and you've saved the ADU discussion to the very end, which really isn't going to give it the appropriate amount of time it deserves. Um, and I would respectfully suggest that that get tabled for another meeting rather than, um, you know, disallow people from having their, um, their um, time to speak. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bron Bronson, Bron Bronson, I don't want to get that wrong. I'm sorry if I did. Stuart submitted an email to me in relationship to, it was from Colleen actually, submitted an email providing comments about the ADU article. And I, I did post it as part of this agenda item. However, there's nothing, there was never a discussion about ADUs for this particular agenda item, Stuart and Colleen. Um, so I, it isn't being taken up as part of this meeting. I'm sorry if that may have been misunderstood in our earlier communication. Okay, no, that's great. Thank you very much. Yes, Colleen wrote the letter. Yes. <laughs> uh, but we operate as a team at One Computer, obviously. Thank you very much. I understand. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for that clarification. Uh, let's see, uh, the next speaker will be Steve Revelak. Hello, Madam Chair, Steve Revelak, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Um, I'd like to just offer one historical you know, reference and um, one specific ask for Mr. Fleming if you know, he would consider it. Um, when our zoning laws were rewritten in the 1970s, there was a lot of you know, concern at the time about limiting you know, the potential for population growth in the town. And you can really see this on the map in the sense that where an area was two family homes, it got turned into a two family district. If there was a, a small apartment, it got turned into a low density apartment district. Big apartments became large apartment districts. And you know, I think the intent was to just kind of hold the built environment to where it was at the time. I mean, and this worked. The, you know, the population stopped increasing and even went down. So I would, submit to you that um, if one can use zoning to limit population, one could also limit zoning to limit the amount of parking and therefore the amount of traffic. Um, having gone to enough permitting hearings, you know, everybody talks about traffic. Nobody likes traffic. Everyone would like less traffic. And I think a way to have one, I think that reducing the number of cars could be an effective way to reduce traffic. So, um, you know, I'm a big fan of Mr. Watson's idea of parking maximums. Um, now, as far as a specific thing that I hope Mr. Fleming would consider addressing is the parking requirement inequities in apartment buildings. So, whereas my two bedroom half duplex is required to have one parking space, um, a two bedroom apartment is is required to have one and a half. So again, there, there's a historical reason for this, which is, you know, at the time that regulation was, was put into place, there was a, a conscious effort to discourage higher density and less expensive forms of housing. Um, and it would, I, I'd like to see us even that playing field. But um, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Avalak. Uh, Barbara Thornton is our next speaker. Hi, thank you very much. I um, I want to build on- I'm sorry, Barbara, could you just state your, your name and- Oh, I'm sorry, Barbara Thornton, 223 Park Ave, Arlington. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I want to build on David Watson's comment, which I thought was very good. It, whether whether James uh, Fleming decides to put together a, uh, a, a big and wild and, and uh, provocative proposal or whether he decides to, to look for something more conservative uh, that, that, or small or limited that will be most likely to pass. I hope he does it because this is the conversation. It's like feeling an elephant, this transportation and parking issue in Arlington and we need the discussion and this is a great vehicle to encourage the discussion. Uh, and I look forward to having an opportunity to see it on the uh, town meeting floor. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Uh, James, any final thoughts before we close this, this discussion item? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, this has been really helpful. So my assumption is that I just file it from here and then at some point we have a public hearing uh, if it gets in, if everything clears through the, the town offices. Correct. Uh, you'll 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 hear from um, Jenny and Aaron. Uh, I don't know, Jenny, if you want to speak to the the process. Yeah. So you you need to file your warrant article by Friday. That's the deadline. Uh, usually, the warrant uh, is put together over the course of the following week and then issued. Um, we'll have a copy of it probably at some point next week, um, and we'll begin our legal notice, uh, which will include all of the warrant articles that we know are zoning warrant articles, which have to have a public hearing. Um, and we, we, we figure out the, the timing of that. Erin and I have looked at some of the options for those dates um, and we'll let the petitioners know which night they'll fall on. So you'll, you'll be given time um, to know when you would be, when you will have the public hearing. The public hearing usually just happens that one evening and then it's uh, the, the board waits until the end of all of the public hearings before they make any recommended, they have their deliberation and their recommended votes. Um, so, you know, you, you could attend more than one night of public hearings if you so desire, but usually you're just expected to attend on the night of your public hearing. Sounds good. And then when I submit the warrant article, do I also have to file a proposed motion in the like changes to the bylaw, et cetera? Ideally, yes. <laughs> you would need to be okay. as specific as possible uh, if you can, but otherwise you would need to, by the time you come to the public hearing, that would have to be, um, we would have to know what you were actually filing um, so All that right. we can both be responsive to what you're filing and prepare the board accordingly and also uh, provide the public with ample time to, to understand what you're, what you're looking to amend in the zoning bylaw. If I could interject, you don't have to have that when you file the warrant article. Not for Friday. Not for Friday. Not for Friday. And you could actually try to talk to Jenny and Aaron afterward and say, this is what I'm thinking of doing. Help me figure out what I need to change in the zoning bylaw to make it happen. Yes, and 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 James has already done that. He started with that. Um, so uh, we we did we did start from that point, and that's actually when I recommended that he might come and talk with the board. Um, so we'll I'm happy to follow up with you and Aaron as well, I'm sure. Um, time permitting between now and Friday, um, and then certainly after, uh, if okay. you have any questions. Yeah, this all sounds and fantastic. Jane, have you uh, followed, have you um, uh, made yourself aware of all the other requirements for what you need to do to file a warrant article? Because I'd hate you to get tripped up by administrative requirements, like having 10, yeah. like 10 citizens. A, like, having, like having pages of signatures? Exactly. Yes. Uh, I, I know that the the, uh, the the whole process for handing it in is different because COVID, um, and so I'll have to I I'll reach out to the town offices and say you know when can I drop them off and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but uh, uh, unless there's something I really really missed, then uh, then I think I'm mostly all set. And now it's just deciding what I actually want to file. Great. Well, good luck to you, and thank you so much for for reaching out. I think this was a great discussion, and I really appreciate you bringing the topic in front of us. Yeah, it's great to get professionals in on this. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so that uh, closes item uh, agenda item three.
And we'll move to agenda item number four, which uh, is a review of the meeting minutes from October 5th, 2020. So I will uh, go through roll call to see if there are any uh, changes or amendments to uh, what was submitted, starting with Ken. I just have one comment on page one, the last paragraph. Uh, Mr. Lau asked if the rear exit, uh, I asked if the um, sales floor exit was handicapped accessible, but they, that's it. Great, thank you, Ken. Uh, David? Uh, I don't think I had any comments. Great, thank you. Jean? I do have some comments and maybe David will tell me I'm wrong, but I think they attributed some statements to me that were statements of David. So on page one, the next to last paragraph that starts with Mr. Watson asked to have a detailed design of the bi indoor bicycle parking. Um, I don't think I asked any of um, the rest of those. Um, so I'm guessing that that whole paragraph is Mr. Watson, because I don't think it was me, but I don't know what David thinks about that. I actually don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember asking uh, questions. I, I don't remember, I don't remember specifically asking them, but I, I don't discount the possibility that I did ask those other questions. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll yeah we could either do the terrible thing and turn them all into the um, um, passive voice so nobody knows who asked. Them. Yeah, that's probably the, why don't we just do that? So um, you could say there are questions asked about and then put all those in, right? Um, then on, um, I had the same problem on page three. Um, Mr. where it says Mr. Benson asked about public participation. I don't um, remember the first one. I don't remember asking about the public participation or the concern about those without internet access. Somebody else did that. However, I did talk about the design guidelines and the rest of that paragraph. So. Which one was that? I'm sorry, which which paragraph was it? Um, the one that says Mr. Benson asked about public participation. It's the third page. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask that question and I didn't say a concern about those without internet access. So I don't know who made those statements. The rest of the statements attributed to me in that paragraph are correctly attributed to me. Those, those sound like the, like questions I might have asked, but I again, I don't yours, specifically David. recall. I think they were yours. <laughs> I think we have been confused once again. Just those two or this just one is two. these no, two? Just those okay. two, the rest, right. the rest were mine. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Jean? No, that was it. Great, Katie, did you have any changes? Nope, nothing for me. Great, and I didn't have anything either. All right, um, do we have a motion to approve the uh, meeting minutes from October 5th, 2020 as amended? So, so motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? Great, we'll take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. David? Yes. Dean? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So those are approved and that closes agenda item four. And we now move to our last item, which is open forum. Yes, please, Jean. What about the um, town meeting process draft? I'm sorry, I don't see that on my novice agenda. Let me reopen it. It's part, it's within the zoning bylaw amendment piece. There's an attachment that's town meeting process draft. Were we not going to discuss that? Maybe we weren't going to discuss it. 
I apologize. Let me go back. I just put it on the screen. I did post it with uh, when we were talking about the zoning amendments. This is basically just we took the process that we discussed, um, and Aaron pulled together this uh, this table, which outlines the dates, the process, and describes what the actions are. We um, we had some internal staff discussion about turning this into like a <laughs> like an infographic or a, a, a sort of maybe easier to digest version of this, but uh, didn't have a chance to pull that together by tonight. So, Erin, is there anything else to this document you want to uh, share? Uh, not specifically, but the goal with this document would be to um, circulate it directly to um, citizen petitioners. Um, you know, James asked basically this question in the last uh, last or two agenda items ago, um, but also post this, um, you know, prominently on the ARB's page. Um, or in other locations, just so that um, there's clear action items for both. Um, well, just so that everyone understands what the ARB is doing at each step, what the petitioner might need to be doing. Um, primarily, it would be a citizen petitioner because the ARB knows what it's doing. Um, and then for the general public or town meeting members that may want to observe the process, um, just so that all of that was sort of in one spot um and i know some of the dates in here are still kind of to be determined as we understand the, the total slate of zoning articles that would be before you um in the next couple of months um but i i kind of wanted to break it down based on some of the co comments that the arb has received over the last couple of months about the process and and try and make it a little bit clearer um, so while this is this is wordy, <laughs> or <laughs> maybe I could pare it down in some locations, um, the graphic that we're thinking about is basically just a timeline that you know simplifies this message um, at a glance. So someone could look at a single page and be like, "Oh, this is where we are in the timeline, and these are the steps that we've already taken, and these are the steps that still need to be taken." Can I just say, I think it, I think it's really nice. I like how, you know, I'm not sure if an infographic will be better or needed. Maybe it will, but I think this is, you know, good, very good, excellent, far beyond what sort of we've had before. And I think it gives a lot of good information. I still remain a little concerned that we get time crunched at the end. Um, and, but you left, you know, uh, some wiggle room there, but you know, yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, I liked it. I'll, I'll just say that I, I think it's phenomenal too. I think not only for the public, but for new board members as well, you know, who may not have gone through this, this process yet. I think also that um, per some of the discussions we had with Barbara leading to this as well, you could imagine that even leading up to the, um, the, the time when you know that the um, period of submitting warrant articles will open, you could even a month out from that identify, this is when you would start to have the discussions like James was having with us tonight if you are soliciting board feedback. So I, I think it's a wonderful piece that can be um, modified as necessary based on when town meeting or special town meetings occur. If, if I could just add, if there's one suggestion that I would make, it would be something, you know, the before the warrant closes, you know, where there's a process where people can, you know, go to staff and come to the board to get some board input. Um, so if, you know, if you were to add anything and I, but it's too late for this year, so I didn't think of it, but for later years, just starting off with, you know, the sort of when the warrant is open or before the warrant is open, but I think it's really good. David? I, I also really like it. And um, I think um, the, the text is great and really helpful and, uh, and really helps set expectations both for, for us as board members as well as the public. Um, I think having a graphic alongside it might be helpful, but I wouldn't lose the, the written version. 
Um, and similar to what Jean just said, I was actually thinking that for future town meetings, maybe the first first uh, item on the list would actually basically be uh, you know any time after the previous town meeting is the time to start the discussion um, instead of trying to constrain it even to a month or two months or or whatever. I, I don't know what the rest of you think about that, but I I just. I would prefer to get those discussions started as early as possible, and I'm finding it helpful now that we're we're being a little bit more organized about about in, encouraging them. Jenny, yeah, um, well, this this section right here it, it start, sort of hints at the idea that it would be please discuss this with us, <laughs> um, and you know your article, but also to learn more about the process. Um, but I think that we could either now add, you know, a row before this that talks about, or, you know, speaks to the things that you're mentioning now and just sort of in generic terms. But I think we probably need a bigger conversation about it at another meeting. Um, and we can kind of draft, I have some ideas about it right now, but I, I'd prefer to write it out and then share it and we can talk about it. Um, because I think it should also be like, and you know, tied to the master plan, a committee may be involved. Like I think we, I think we need to plant those um, those points in in this process and make that much more intentional. Yeah, um, would be my would be my preference. So if it's okay, uh, Aaron and I could work on just a sort of precursor to this for now, um, just sort of like a pre warrant or before the warrant closes. Um, or we could just, you know, post this for now and move forward, um, whatever is your desire. But I, I like, I definitely agree. We need something that's like pre before, <laughs> the before. I would, and I just, I, would, I just wanted. I would say post this now because the warrant is about to close, but also come back, you know, sometime soon with what the pre warrant close one would look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to just remind you, um, there there was interest in the zoning bylaw working group at being involved in in the preliminary process. Yeah. So I was, you're I was thinking of them to, when I said how to frame that. Yeah, when I <laughs> when I said committee, I was thinking of them really. But yes, um, yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll work on something. I think we'll probably just post it now as is if the board is all okay with it and we'll also work on that timeline which was a companion to this not a substitute um and i think we'll come back at another time to talk about that the process that happens before so i do think that's where we should spend continue to spend time talking about that and what and sort of the the steps that need to be taken and i completely agree that it is immediately after the last town meeting it always starts However much we we don't we may not want it to, um, it ha it should start at that time. I agree. And did you have any thoughts you wanted to share? No, nope. Katie. Great. Well, it sounds like um, we should go ahead and, and post this and uh, look forward to adding the additional pre steps at a future date. Great. Is there anything else I missed before we go to open meeting? I apologize. I remember reading it and thinking how wonderful it was, and I completely lost it in the agenda. So thank you, Jean, for bringing that. Uh, yes, thank you, Jean. Um, Rachel, can I add one Please. thing for uh, maybe next meeting's agenda? Um, I was hoping that we get a quick overview of um, past projects that we have uh, approved, let's say the last year or so, or two, and just a, qu a quick little thing, is it being built? Is it not being built? Just so we have a, a sort of a, a, a quick snapshot of the history of what, what, we'd be, what we've been doing. Um, you know, I took a drive around town uh, and I was looking at some of the projects, you know, that, we've, that we approved and looked at some of the projects we've looked at and it's gone nowhere, like the dog, uh, uh, the animal hospital. Uh, is that stopped? Uh, the daycare center that we approved, is that stopped? The addition to the daycare center, you know, to, to the side. 
is that going on? I, I just want to see what's happening. Um, and, you know, is it because of the pandemic or is it not because, of, or what's happening? I, I just want you to get an understanding of, uh, of that more. It doesn't have to happen right away. I know you're really busy and everything else, uh, Jenny, and uh, I don't want to add more work that you need. <laughs> no, it's actually, I think it's pretty straightforward to do actually. And I mean, in, in I could probably give the update any time, but I probably want to do a little due diligence with Aaron on the ones that have not proceeded just yet. I do believe some of it is due to the pandemic, but there there are some other issues with other projects that have been permit that have received a special permit um, and have other steps in the process. It's often not the end of their process anyway. Mm -hmm. It's a step in their process. But um, but I'd be glad to provide that at a future meeting. I'm not sure it would be the net the very next meeting. It might be the meeting on the 25th though, which That's is the, the second one. Um, so if that if that's okay, I think that gives us time to kind of put put things together a little bit. But yeah, I think that would be very interesting for the board and, and other people to understand what happens. It might you know it might uh, affect the way we uh, look at things, you know. So I just like to have that in hand. Okay. Great. Thanks, Ken. Any other items before we move to public comments? Great. All right. So we will open um, our open forum. And so any member of the public who wishes to speak, please use the raise hand function in the participant menu. Uh, I will call on you in the order that the hands are raised. You will be given three minutes to speak. And I ask that you identify yourself by your first and last name and your address. I'll give it another 30 seconds. I don't see anyone this evening. So seeing no hands raised, I will close open forum. And before we uh, close this meeting, I believe Katie that this is your last meeting with us. So I just wanna thank you so much for everything that you contributed during your time on the board. It's been such a pleasure working together with you. I really have appreciated your perspective and. Thank you so much for volunteering your time on behalf of the town. Thanks to all my board members. I'm sorry I've never gotten to meet you in person. Um, and I'm sorry that my time with you all was so short. I really appreciate you all and the service that you do. Um, and I look forward to seeing you hopefully at a meeting at some point um, in the future, just around town. So be well, everyone. And we can't even take you out for a drink. You know. I know. <laughs> it's very sad. <laughs> Thank you, lady. And, and please. Please come back uh, with uh, housing policy information at the appropriate times. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I look forward to being a, an attendee at meetings um, and wish I were in a life position to attend more regularly as this commitment requires. So thank you all. Great. So with that, uh, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So motioned. Second. Second. I'll take a roll call. Ken? Yes. David? Yes. Dean? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you all. Bye. Have a great Good evening. Night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Katie.